Hey, what's up, good people? This is Eddie Gray, and we are back at it again talking about Logic Pro. So happy to be able to talk to you about this because this strategy alone has been able to help save so much time and so much aggravation. So what are we talking about specifically? Creating our own loops. Now we're gonna be hitting this from two angles, pre-recorded material or material that you record on your own so you can insert your own instrumentation. And I'll explain more in a bit. Now, why are we doing this? Well, we wanna make sure that your efficiency is there, that you're clear, that you're organized and well-equipped for any and all situations. Number two, we wanna make sure that your user experience is an easy one. There's already a lot going on in life in general, and so why not make this experience a better one, a clear one, a neater one as a whole? But let's make sure that we stay organized so that we have clarity of mind. Number three, when you generate ideas, I want you to be able to do it in a quick fashion. What should take 30 seconds shouldn't take five minutes, right? If you wanna generate a quick four on the floor, that shouldn't take five minutes. And so this technique here is going to save you time and energy. Here's the first example, let's get right into it. Here we go. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna open up the loop browser, key command O, and from here, you can select any kick that works for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this in, but not necessarily to bar one. I wanna give myself enough space so I can edit the remains of the region. Let me go ahead and hit Command U. And what that's gonna do is create a cycle region around that specific region. I don't have to think about it. All right, let's take a listen to this part. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do here is edit everything so that we're just listening to the kick Probably not a bad idea, I'm gonna hit the key command Z, zoom to selection, to apply the necessary fade, just to make sure this is as clean as humanly possible. So this is an audio track. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I not only send this in to the loop browser as is, I wanna make sure that it has the right timing. For example, when I drag it into another session, I wanna make sure that it's the perfect bar or the perfect two beats. So what I'm going to do here is select snap to grid. And I think I'm going to go with B. It would make the most sense, I think, in this style of music. Now, my other hand is occupied by a microphone. So I'm going to use the marquee tool as my primary tool. Snap to grid is in motion. I'm going to create a selection. And that's one perfect beat. But what if you wanted it to be a perfect two beats, right? Or four? What if you wanted it to be a bar? Then you would create the selection with the marquee tool, and then you want to hit command J. And what that's going to do is rather than it being a isolated separate region, it's going to now create the looper sample. In this case, we are creating a perfect loop, and it's going to create the necessary space so that when I loop this in the context of a song, it's done in a perfect manner. So command U brings me back to the cycle region. I will check by click holding the bottom right of the region and you can see that the length is a perfect one bar zero zero zero. So then I'll go back into the loop browser, click drag this into the loop browser, and now we apply the necessary metadata. I'm gonna call this kick default. And it's not a one shot, because I am gonna be using it in the context of looping. And scale, well, it's a drum, so it's atonal, right? Genre, I'm not necessarily thinking about this with a genre in mind. And we'll hit the kick category, single, probably clean, Let's go dry, and I guess I'll just throw in dark. All right, so let's go ahead and create that. So once I go inside of the loop browser, I will type in kick default, and there it is right there. Now, that very well could have applied to a one shot. It doesn't have to be a loop. It could just be one crash symbol that you just drag in 
at the beginning of a transition or something like that. In this next example, we will specifically be looking at how to create a looped section. Now, bear in mind, this could be for audio, MIDI regions, pattern regions, or the drummer regions, but for now, we're just looking at audio. All right, for this next example, we're still gonna be using audio, but more likely than not, you're never really gonna use a kick in an isolated way like this, and that's gonna be it, right? You're probably gonna repeat it, you're probably going to shoot this inside of a sampler. So many possibilities. And so what I'm going to do is I'm thinking in advance of some of the possibilities. All of us write modern music to some extent. So why don't I go ahead and create a four on the floor pattern? Because more likely than not, at some point, I will need to grab for it. And if it's not prepared, that is taking time away. So what I'm, what I'm going to do here is hit command R to duplicate this over. And so now you see that this is a four on the floor pattern. Let's check this out. All right, and for those of you that don't really like the hi-hat, you can get out of the grid by either selecting ticks or you can go ahead and turn off snap to grid. Uh, that's also a nice key command to learn as well. And so now I am off of the grid and I am purposefully going to get rid of that. And because all of these regions are selected, I can then create a fade. You can also go into the region inspector under the more disclosure triangle. Under fade out, you can just click and drag up. That's one way to change the number there. And then of course you could always just double click and enter a numerical value. And so then now I have a fixed pattern which will adjust to the BPM of my session. Let me go back into snap to grid mode. So I'm making the best decision possible. This time I'm utilizing the secondary tool and I'm gonna create a selection. Command J, I will hit O and drag this in again. And you run through the same exact process. So we'll call this kick four four. All right, so let me hit O, hit I to clean up the space on my screen. And let's drag this down to, let's say 90 BPM. All right, let's check this out. All right, go ahead and hit pause, try this out yourself. Make sure you're getting the perfect integers so that when you drag this into your session, they are perfectly looped in time. To be able to create something and to do it in such a way where it perfectly lines up into your session, you're going to want to take your time with this, press pause right now, and go into the session. Listening to this in a passive fashion is simply not going to help you. If you go into the session and you utilize each and every one of those techniques that were carefully selected in order for you to move forward with this specific strategy, then you will find your footing and you will find that, that middle road where where you understand it and you're able to execute quickly. So if you do, of course, have any questions and you want to make sure that you're on the right path, maybe maybe you missed something um, or, or, or you need further clarification, go ahead and hit us up and we will go from there. All right, on this next example, we no longer are working with audio, whether it's pre-recorded or you recorded it yourself. You can just, of course, record yourself and create a loop out of that. But what we're talking about now is the ability to use MIDI loops. And, and this becomes a little bit more interesting because uh, there's you can do more with it. For example, with the previous uh, situation, I dragged in an audio loop with the kick that was already recorded for me. But what if I could make the pattern with the MIDI region and the MIDI events, and I can insert any sound, right? The, 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 the possibilities now increase greatly because the pattern has already been created and I can change the sound at will. Maybe this kick drum works now in the drafting stage, but when it comes to post-production, we need to change the sound and you can do so at the ready. And so hopefully you're starting to kind of see what I'm doing here. This is gonna help you tremendously. Just stay with me. Let's go to the next example and I will see you guys in a bit. So wouldn't it be great if we had a system where we didn't necessarily have to draw in typical things that we all do, eighth note hi-hats, quarter note kicks, snares on the two and the four, snares on the one and the three. We all do this kind of stuff, 
And so let's go ahead and make this autonomous. So I'm going to go ahead and create a MIDI region. We can also very well create a pattern region. All right. But just for right now, create a MIDI region. So I'm going to double click, access the piano roll and resize it. Now it's up to you how you want to draw these in. Everybody's so different with their techniques. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, what's important is that we just, you know, get to the finish line. And so that's all that really matters. As long as you get there and the music sounds great and you know, you're in a great state of mind while you do it, um, then beautiful. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just copying and pasting the necessary notes to hit where they need to hit. And there is no software instrument associated with this yet, as you can see. But that's not the point. The point is that I have the quarter notes ready. And if I want to write electronic music, then maybe I access Drum Machine Designer. If I want to write hip-hop, maybe I access Drum Machine Designer. Maybe I want some weird, strange drums. Check out my YouTube video. And uh, let's say you want just an acoustic kit. You can just go into Drum Kit Designer. And so now the MIDI information exists separate from the software instrument. So I'll give you an example. Let's go ahead and drag this into the Loop Browser. We're no longer dealing with audio. This is a four on the floor, and we can use it for any sore sound, obviously, but I'm just going to presuppose that our intention is to use it for kick. And what I'll do is I'll also write in the word empty, because when I do drag it in, Logic knows that this is just MIDI information with no software instrument. And so... Again, depending on where you're dragging it, all of this is going to be different. The metadata can all differ. I'm just going to keep this really simple. I guess I can actually also type that in. All right, so let's go ahead and hit create. And pretend two weeks from now, super busy, doing all sorts of stuff. And so I'm going to sift through just the MIDI loops. And there is my four on the floor kick with empty MIDI. So let's drag that in. Close the loop browser. There is the MIDI information. We have no instrument, but that is done on purpose because I don't want to have to recreate this every single time. So from here, I will select Drum Machine Designer. And then at this point, you can just choose whatever it is you want, any and all kicks to suit your fancy. So that's one way to think about it. Something else that I want to point out, let's say you fall in love with blazing hot. This seems to be the kit that you always like to use. Or on top of that, maybe you always want to select one specific drum kit piece. So for example, if I go into DMD and I always want this kick, what I'll do is drag this in now. And because I have drag this in with a software instrument instantiated. It's going to remember all of that info. So let's go ahead and try this in now. Uh, the only difference is this time I will type in DMD. So let's hit create. So it does take a second to get there. But remember, the very first time we created this, it was empty. And I will illustrate that again. And then now because we've saved it with other information, we can see that logic is ever so smart and it's dragging this in with an instrument of choice. Go ahead and check this out, set it up for yourself, and I'll see you on the next one. Okay, so again, make sure you press pause and you take a moment to do the exercise. If you don't, this will be a fancy concept and you'll forget it in a week. All right, wanna make sure that, that you establish the habit and you start using this in your workflow. Now, I just want to reiterate, we took an empty MIDI region in an empty channel strip, which will be this guy, and we were able to pre-configure a pattern with no sound dictated, right? With no sound on the channel strip. Now, that is magical. Never seen that before. It's just incredible what you could do to your workflow if you want to. So if you do a little bit of the work now, it can pay off huge over time, all right? And this could be as simple as 16th note hi-hats, different kick patterns depending on the genre of, of, of music that you usually make. 
the the possibilities are truly endless and i'm really really excited to see what you end up doing with this all right in this last example we are putting away the concept of midi regions and we're looking at another midi format called the pattern region new to 10.5 10.6 in logic now what's interesting about this format is that it's probably the easiest way to input MIDI data. So you talk about really, really expediting your workflow and making everything just super clean and super efficient. One more thing about the pattern format is that in a way, it allows you to write music that you probably wouldn't write otherwise. So go ahead and take a look at this next video because it can really change the way that you think about music. I know for me, I use it with kick patterns all the time. Why would I create a MIDI region or play it in, right? Hit record, quantize, right? Why would I do all that if all I have to do is control click, create a pattern region, input the MIDI data, and then I'm done. So let's get into this last example and we will go from there. All right, and for my last trick, we're gonna talk about another technique. Thus far, we've talked about audio. The benefits is that it's already set up. The sound source is already set up. You don't have to think about it. This is great for just quickly drafting up an idea without necessarily regarding the sound. We know that that can take quite a long time. The second methodology has us creating a software instrument, but not necessarily for the purposes of having a channel strip or a patch set up, right? With all the various audio effects, inserts, the bus, the sense. There's no need for that if all you want to do is get the pattern. Now, some of us, we already know what sounds we like, we already know what drum kit we like, and we just need it to show up on the page. And so that's where this methodology will come into effect. For others, we're going to need another way of doing it, and I respect that, and, and that's why I wanna show you this other method. So what we're gonna do now is select a pattern region rather than a MIDI region. And why this is helpful is because if you're using logic stock native plugins such as drum machine designer it can automatically read all the various kits so if i change my kit to let's say the advanced machines logic knows every sample and so it's really easy to drop an idea such as a four on the floor all right so now that i've drafted that together i'll hit the key command e and there's my pattern right there. And so all I have to do from here, because this is a perfect integer, four bars, zero, 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 I'm gonna hit O, and I'm gonna drag this into the loop browser. Now bear in mind, this is a pattern region, so it's another format. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that inside of the metadata. You'll go through all these steps. So I want you to pay more attention when you do get there. I will go ahead and hit create. Now remember on the last video, I was sifting through the MIDI loops. I now want to sift through just the pattern loops. And let's see if we can find this. Let me call this pattern four on the floor pattern region. There it is right there. So if I drag this into the bottom of the track header where there are no extra tracks, this is not only going to instantiate the region, but if I open up the inspector, you can see all of the plugins that we were using last time around. So this is a nice way of also expediting your workflow. The last thing I want to throw out there for those of you that like to draft in an even quicker way, or you just need another methodology. Option Command N opens up the new tracks dialog window. And from here, I want you to select drummer. Any style that fits, go ahead and select it. And then once you find a couple patterns that you like, then you save those. So this is like almost like homework, right? You're preparing for the big test. You wanna make sure you are on top of your game. So let's say this is a pattern that you fell in love with. We're gonna drag this in. This now becomes a drummer loop. And so this can be a drummer loop, right? Four on the floor, describe it to yourself so you can remember. You go ahead and save that. So the next time it's time to work, you know what to do, right? Everything becomes easy. 
It's it's all just fluid. That's really what I want for you. That's really been my goal since day one. Okay, so there it is right there, drummer loop 4-4. Four, four. So let's say this is a brand new session. We drag this in. Let me clear up my screen a little bit. All right, so is it O E I? And there is the same exact pattern because I took the time necessary in order to make sure I had all the pieces so when it was time to work, I could just work fluidly. Now, this isn't something you want to do on a day where you're supposed to be cranking out some music, making videos, taking pictures, whatever it is you do out there. The important thing is, is that you set yourself up for success. Make sure that you have at least a couple of these things ready. So something, of course, that we need to address or it would be a massive disservice to you is what if you mess up? What if we botch it and we need to delete the file itself? I mean, it's going to happen from time to time. So let's see if I could find something on my screen here. Let's say, I don't know, maybe I duplicate one too many of these tests, right? You can see I have a couple of duplicates here. Uh, let me go down a test and see if I find anything that I know is not going to work. Mm, not exactly sure, but I will just pretend that one of these risers was a duplicate. Okay, so if I control click it and delete it, it will ultimately be out of my session. So that is one approach. Now, bear in mind, when you delete it from this folder, which I'll give you the file path in a second, you still need to go into Apple Loop Browser and you need to re-index all of your loops in order for logic to read this change. So I just wanna be clear about that, okay? All right, so file path, where can I find this? We can find this Mac, users, whatever your name is, in my case, Chameleon 8, library, audio, Apple Loops, user loops. Now, make sure that you're looking at the right folder because there are two folders that look fairly the same. So yeah, delete it from this file path, once you re-index all loops, it'll be gone from your system. I want to make sure that things aren't too cluttered and messy. Clarity is king. I wanted to thank you so much for this opportunity to train and learn and grow with you. I consider myself a student first. I know I'm out here talking all this talk, but it really is in the spirit of service so I can contribute to all of my fellow modern creatives. If I had had this information, I believe that I would have gotten there much faster. What is there? Monetizing your music, being independent, uh, having your music be fruitful, having your music provide a path for you. And so, yeah, thank you so much for supporting me on this journey because it further vindicates uh, what I'm doing. So, yeah, I really appreciate it. This is Eddie Gray signing off. Take it easy. Stay up, stay happy, stay focused on what you want, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.